watching Tamnet TV, not just another channel. Welcome to our news. In local headlines, Lusaka couple pleads guilty of secretly burying their one-month infant. Solwezi's Kimasala area in water stress. Friday's budget presentation steers debate in parliament. In international news, Nigeria fuel tanker crash kills 23 people. And in sports news, forest rangers part ways with Conleg Luchanga and five others. For the details, do join me shortly after this break. Nsika is here. We have you all covered with just 150 kwacha. You can advertise every day from 17 hours to 18 hours. For a 30 second ad, get the benefit of selling your products and services on Nsika. For more details, call our marketing department on plus 260-953-995099 plus 260-962 four 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 seven two six or plus two six zero nine seven one one seven seven four six seven email us on info at camnetvafrica.com terms and conditions apply are you a filmmaker well you are exactly what we are looking for. Tamna TV is calling on local filmmakers. For more details, you can visit our headquarters in Ibex Hill next to Hilltop Hospital. Contact us on 0962-444-726. Cabinet TV. Not just another channel. With the details, my name is Liseli Kanyanga. In March this year, the Zambian government, through the Ministry of Finance, released 200 million kwacha to pay former government workers their terminal benefits. The money was targeting to cater for over 12,400 civil servants who retired between 1999 and 2019. To date, civil servants are still chasing their terminal benefits. On Thursday, some former government workers protested at the Ministry of Health offices, demanding for their terminal benefits. The workers explain that they have been lied to for too long and it's time to demand for what they worked for. We have details in this report. Amen. A prayer of hope given by the frustrated retirees, hoping for government to pay them their retirement benefit. These are more than 100 retirees who gathered this morning at the Ministry of Health demanding for their benefits from government. We are here. We have got our fellow retirees. What they want is money. Even what I want, even me, because I'm a retiree, even I'm representing them, we need money. Since 2009, people are still waiting for their money. And they have, so many, they have died without getting their Please government government The retirees who were working in different parts of the country in the ministry, some has cleaners, directors among others, appealing to government to meet their demands or they will march to State House. Kwa mba wa ntuwaka mba tindala makulipe kuhewe 
So However, the ministry has promised to address them on Monday, the 28th of September 2020. <laughs> Miriam Kemba, reporting for Kamni TV News in Lusaka. A water challenge has hit the residents of Kimasala in the Solwezi district of northwestern province. The residents who depend on the northwestern water supply and sewerage company have told Kamni TV News that their taps have been dry for the past three months. The residents explain that as a result, they are they are forced to draw water from shallow wells, which are fast drying up due to the hot season. A press query sent to the company has remained unanswered for two days now. Details in this report. It is an unbelievable scene to see people using such kind of water 56 years after Zambia got its independence. The people of Kimasala community in Solwezi have for the past three months been experiencing erratic water supply from the Northwestern Water Supply and Storage Company. To help themselves, the community has dug shallow wells where they are drawing water. Mwenefishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishish
Green Party leader Peter Sinkamba has charged that the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, has no powers to cancel voter registers in line with the 2016 amended constitution. Mr. Sinkamba explains that the commission only has powers to amend the register, not to do away with it. Mr. Sinkamba has cited 46 and 229 of the Constitution of Zambia amendment, which shows that the constitution only imposes due on ECZ to register citizens who attained the age of 18 to be registered as voters and not to deregister voters or to annul the entire register. ECZ has decided to refresh the voter register in preparation for the 2021 general elections. All this is done is to be done rather within a period of 30 days with a target of registering 9 million voters. But this goal has raised dust among many stakeholders who have challenged the electoral body to stop the process. ECZ has no power whatsoever to cancel or annul a voter's register. Uh, actually, if you go to the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia in Article 46 and Article 229, sub-Article 2C, uh, duty is imposed on the Electoral Commission of Zambia to register any citizen who wants to be registered, provided those persons are 18 years and above. Okay, so that is the power which ECZ has. It has no power in the constitution to allow a register, but to register voters. Now, when you come to the Electoral Process Act of 2016, the power which is there is for ECZ to have a, 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 a continuous registration process where a voter's register is updated continuously. In section 14, uh, ECZ is empowered to compile and maintain the register. And the compilation of the register was already done in 2016. So the only power that has remained after 2016 is for ECZ to amend the register and this power is in section 16 of the electoral processes act and uh, uh, if you look at this electoral processes act there is no power for ECZ to cancel or to allow a register the only power which is in section 10 is where ECZ can deregister a voter if that person is no longer a citizen of Zambia, or that person is no longer 18 years and above, or that person is in lo no longer in possession of an NRC. And uh, uh, they have, these are the only conditions. There is no other condition at all. This is it has no power to arbitrarily uh, cancel the register or remove people from the register and uh, come up with its own other register. That is not there. So we have since written to the Electoral Commission of Zambia to advise them to abandon that route because it is illegal, it is unconstitutional, and if they want to continue, we shall abandon this whole process. And we don't want this uh, ECZ to, to mess up the election next year. Because really, whatever they are doing uh, is not backed by law, uh, it's just uh, uh, arbitrary actions by uh, Commissioner uh, Chulu and the other commissioners which is wrong, they shouldn't do things. The pronouncement made by the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, that prisoners will be allowed to vote for the first time in history of Zambia in 2021 has continued to steer debate. On Thursday, Parliament was activated on this issue when Monze Central Member of Parliament, Jack Mwimbu, asked Vice President Enonge Wina on modalities which have so far been put in place to actualize the process. In her response, Ms. Wina Wina explained that consultations are still ongoing and the nation will be informed on progress. But contributing to the debate, a Zambezi East Member of Parliament, Brian Kambita, accused the Patriotic Front PF of wanting to rig the elections using the prison vote. In response to the question raised by Honorable Mwimbu, 
I wish to inform this August House that in A, the Zambia Correctional Service, working with the Electoral Commission of Zambia and the stakeholders, have undertaken a mapping exercise in all the correctional facilities across the country. The purpose of the exercise is to collect data on how many prisoners are in possession of national registration cards and voter registration cards. And in B, the House may wish to note that the Electoral Commission of Zambia is the only institution mandated to plan the election modalities. The President has indicated that uh, the Zambia Correction uh, uh, Services in conjunction with the other stakeholders are uh, making consultations pertaining to how prisoners will vote. I would like to find out from her honor the Vice President as to who are these stakeholders who are participating in this particular process, taking into account that political parties are the major stakeholders in the elections in this country. Are they being consulted? I would like the honor the Vice President to clarify this issue because it is hot and contentious. Uh, in no uncertain terms, us as the UPND are opposed to this issue of uh, inmates being involved in voting because of the challenges and modalities. And it is obviously going to favor the PF who are a ruling government at the moment. Now, Your Honor, the Vice President, I would like you to explain clearly what is it that is so compelling that PF, your government, is so comfortable with this issue and pushing the agenda of prisoners having to vote? What is it that is so compelling that has been missing in the previous elections that you should cause prisoners to vote this time around? An agriculture seminar organized by Kamne TV's National Matters presenter and the station's chairman, Pastor Moses Chilua, is underway in Lusaka. The two-day event is aimed at highlighting the need for Zambians to venture into farming as a way of boosting the country's economy. One of the key speakers at the seminar, Prosper Siabula, has encouraged Zambians to take advantage of the readily available market for certain Produces. Here's a report. Comnet TV, through its leaders, Pastor Moses and Victoria Chiloba, are responding to the call of diversification in the agriculture sector and generally moving away from the comfort zone to other economic activities, especially in agriculture. In this regard, a two day seminar with a focus on agriculture and aquaculture has been organized aimed at equipping participants with knowledge on the two sectors. The seminar hopes to make people think outside the box. And speaking on the sidelines of the seminar, Dr. Prospas Yavula has encouraged the people to venture into hemp farming by explaining its benefits both on health and economic level. Hemp is one of uh, um, a crop which uh, belongs in the family of cannabis sativa. And um, this plant is uh, beneficial to us as uh, human beings and also the business uh, part. Why? Because in cannabis um, sativa we have what we call CBD, um, cannabinoid, and that is what is extracted from the, the plant. So in this CBD, right now in the world it has a lot of value in it because it's used for treatment of different ailments starting from HIV, cancer, epilepsy and uh, various other diseases. Right now in America a lot of doctors have uh, resorted to cannabis as part of the therapies in, uh, in medicine and um, it has done a, uh, a lot of benefits. You know cannabis is so safe that even a one month old baby can uh, take in cannabis without effects. So hemp is what we call cannabis sativa. 
In cannabis sativa, we have the CBD component and the THC component. And the THC component, which we call the tetrahydrocannabinoid, is the psych the psychoactive component which is less than 0.3 percent so uh, hemp is basically friendly for everybody to consume the financial part is that uh, hemp is a very um, high crop in terms of a cash crop it produces a lot of biomass and the oil itself another speaker at the seminar mr victor himbai also added his voice with a talk on hot culture is one of the most lucrative businesses in the world especially here in zambia uh, the advantage is for the people that it is a quick money spinner when people invest into this sector they make money quicker than any other project that they do and then the, the other thing is that the initial cost of invest the co initial cost invest of investment is less in terms of horticultural business that's one of the advantages however this sector has a number of challenges which need to be addressed at the policy levels and one of the challenges are the invasion by the uh, outside markets which has taken out our market like for example imported products coming into the country which have taken over our market here in Zambia and if that one can be retired obviously the local people will enjoy the market and then supply the product around and then it will increase the productivity however the other challenge that is there is that there is also unpredictability, which is caused by what we call volatility on the market. Other participants have also expressed happiness at the information shared, adding that their lives have changed for the better. Three months from now, I won't be the same like I came or as I've been operating. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a baker, I bake wedding cakes and uh, birthday cakes, but now I know how to take my business forward from what I've gained from here. So to the event, of course, I had a different perspective of my country. Um, I've always been dreaming to live in the diaspora, to live in countries like Nigeria, countries like South Africa, to live in the United States, to live in other countries, as, um, just to have some time to go outside. But because of the conference that I've attended today, and with the message that we've been given, of course, it's been a turning point for me. Sharon Kalimbula, Camlet News, Lusaka. Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, MMD President Nevis Muba has welcomed his summoning by the police following his recent press conference he held in Lusaka where he raised numerous concerns. On Wednesday, police delivered a call out to him at the party secretariat asking him to avail himself before the police at the police force headquarters on Monday. But Dr. Mumba explains that he being summoned or being taken to court is a good idea so that he can tell the nation about what he and his party know about the PF rigging in the recently held Lukasia constituency parliamentary by-election. As the movement for multi-party democracy and myself, I am extremely um, um, encouraged that the Patriotic Front would like to take this to court because it gives an opportunity for the Zambian people to know the truth of what I said. And um, I'll be very happy uh, to stand uh, in that dock and be able to let the nation know what we know about what is happening in the electoral process of our country. I would like to use this opportunity to speak to the Electoral Commission of Zambia and to all Zambians. It is in our interest it is in the interest of the Patriotic Front. It is in the interest of opposition political leaders. It's in the interest of civil society. It's in the interest of all Zambians that we make for ourselves a credible um, electoral process. In the absence of a credible electoral process, we do not stand a chance to be a united people. Because like I said during the press conference, electoral processes which are flawed become the problem in terms of security in a nation. As Nevis Mumba, I will fight to my last breath to ensure that we clean up the process that helps us elect leaders. When Zambians begin to elect leaders of their choice, the country begins to improve.
We now take our first set of commercials. Do stay with us as we have more interesting stories lined up for you. To create a positive difference in people's lives, one must first understand the way people live. At Savenda, we're here for our community, our partners and our future as a nation and as a continent. Back in 1997, we uh, decided we were going to create this family journey into a bigger opportunity and uh, created a business called Savenda, which meant save nations to develop Africa. It's always important to give back to the people. The government cannot do everything, but as business entities, we'll be able to reach a lot of people. From our humble beginnings in the telecoms and mining sectors, to our work in energy and development projects, we know how important it is to be true to our roots. Our services are, have to be diversified, so that we don't depend on one income stream. Back in the village, I was growing up hunting and doing everything that a village boy would like to do. When you're hunting, you don't depend on one uh, trap, for example. You have to have many traps. So those survival skills brought into the business created opportunities that we, knew, we learned from a young age that you can't survive with just one product. Savenda Group uh, involves Savenda Management, which is a consulting, Savenda Express, which is a corporate branding company, Savenda Electric, which is a manufacturer of energy saving bulbs, Savenda General Insurance, which is a general insurance company, Savenda Fresh Produce, Cyber Africa, which is a center for just dealing with cyber security. Now, Savenda is combining local knowledge with international expertise. It's time to be a part of Zambia's rising success and Africa's exciting future. We are a gateway into Africa and now we are praying with global companies who are coming to Zambia for opportunities and to look for companies that are homegrown. And we are proud to be one of those. You're watching Camnet TV, World News on Camnet. A 24-year-old woman of Lusaka Zilai compound and her 32-year-old boyfriend of the same area have pleaded not guilty, have pleaded guilty before the Lusaka Magistrate Court for concealing the death and eventual burial of their child. This is in a case where Praxida Sikamena, 24, a hairdresser, and Davison Sumanji, 32, a worker of a named company, are charged with one count of concealing the death of a child contrary to section 220 of the penal code chapter 87 of the laws of zambia facts are that the two accused went and buried a one-month-old baby in a bush after they realized the following day when they woke up that the baby had died the two did not waste the court's time by admitting the charge leveled against them young mother accused of dumping a one-month-year-old baby's body in the bush after her boyfriend advised her to do so claims she did not know the procedure as she doesn't have any relatives in Lusaka. 24-year-old Praxida Sikamena, her hairdresser, has been jointly charged with her boyfriend, 32-year-old Davison Simonji, a machine operator, with one count of concealing the birth of children contrary to Section 220 of the Penal Code, Chapter 87 of the Laws of Zambia. Facts surrounding this case are that during the month of July 2020, in the early mornings of the 27th, the duo were sleeping and upon waking up found the baby dead. With no idea of what to do, the 32-year-old boyfriend, Simonji, advised his girlfriend not to announce the death of the baby and proceeded to dispose the body secretly in the bush in Miller Farm Lilai area. With the fear of being questioned from the neighbors the whereabout of a child, the young couple decided to shift, leaving the baby's clothes and other belongings behind. And on the day she went to collect her other belongings from her former house, she was confronted on the whereabout of the baby but had no explanation to give and started running. The neighbors who had their doubts upon a little explanation, she gave decided report to the police where she was apprehended and later boyfriend. The duo, 
who appeared before Lusaka magistrate Mwaka Mikalile this morning admitted committing the offense. And when asked by the court if they had authority or barrier payment to do what they did, the lady told the court that she did not know the procedure as she has no relatives in the area. Both the accused also confirmed to the court that they did not have the burial permit or inform anyone about the death of the baby, neither the baby's father. The couple will appear before court on the 25th of September 2020 for sentencing. Miriam Kemba, reporting for Kamne TV News in Lusaka. The National Union of Public and Private Educators of Zambia is hopeful that government through the Ministry of Finance will allocate more resources to the education sector as Finance Minister Walyangandu presents the 2021 national budget to the nation. Union General Secretary Nelson Mwale says the education sector is highly expectant of a rise in budget allocation to the sector as to attend to the many pending projects in the sector. Mr. Mwale explains that a lot of infrastructure development in the Ministry of Education have remained unfinished due to budget constraints. He also says the sector is in need of resources to cater for school desks, especially in rural areas where children are sitting on the floor. The Union of Public and uh, Private Educators of Zambia, Lupez, we are alive to the fact that uh, tomorrow, Honorable um, Minister of Finance uh, is actually presenting the national budget. And uh, as major stakeholders in the education sector, we are optimistic that I think a lot will come out of that. Uh, we have a number of key areas that we expect to be you know, attended to. One of them is uh, uh, teacher recruitment. We have a lot of teachers that are not uh, in employment on the street, especially when you look at needy areas like mathematics and science. And so we are expecting that all these are captured so that we, at the end of the day, reduce the pupil teacher ratio that we are struggling with. Having said that, we are also talking about uh, an allocation that will help us fight COVID 19. You realize that a number of schools, if you went around now, a number of learners do not have masks. A number of schools do not have the actual materials that are needed to fight COVID-19. And so we expect an allocation uh, within that. Not only that, we have uh, education infrastructure, schools, colleges that are at 80% completion point. We expect that an allocation is made there so that these are completed to avoid the, you know, 50-60% coverage of distance for learners to access a learning place. And not only that, we expect a, a, you know, uh, a situation where materials are procured in these schools. It's a long time that serious materials are proc we are procured in these schools and we expect an allocation within the budget allocation to help us procure you know, a learning material. Panels Institute Southern Africa is urging government to increase the budgetary allocation to the social protection sector as a way of cushioning marginalized communities from the impact of COVID-19. Panels Panos Institute Southern Africa Executive Director Vusumvis. Vusiminji Sifile says the COVID-19 pandemic has affected various sectors of the economy differently and negatively affected livelihoods. Mr. Sifile says uh, he understands that the effective social protection systems are crucial to safeguarding uh, the vulnerable and poor communities. Children when a crisis such as the COVID-19 pandemic hits. He notes that social protection systems are still limited in Zambia, making it more important that the government must strengthen and scale up the social protection systems in order to protect individuals and communities from the adverse impact of COVID-19. 
pandemic. Mr. Sifile says Panos is expecting Finance Minister Dr. Waliangandu to outline how the government plans to cushion vulnerable citizens requiring social protection support in the draft 2021 national budget to be presented this Friday. As Zambia's Minister of Finance presents the 2021 national budget this Friday, Panos Institute Southern Africa urges the government to increase the budgetary allocation to the social protection sector as a way of cushioning marginalized communities from the impact of COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected various sectors of the economy differently and negatively affect affected livelihoods. As Panos, we understand that effective social protection systems are crucial to safeguarding the vulnerable and, uh, and poor communities, particularly children when a crisis such as COVID-19 pandemic hits. However, social protection systems are still limited in Zambia. PISAF is of the view that the government must strengthen and scale up the social protection systems in order to protect individuals and communities from the adverse impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Among other areas we think that the government can improve is the strengthening of social safety funds, such as the social cash transfer scheme, to widen the reach and help prevent vulnerable groups in our society from falling even deeper into poverty during these difficult times of COVID-19. There is also need to tighten measures to ensure that the funds benefit the intended beneficiaries. Doing so will not only help to sustain the lives of the vulnerable and struggling major majority, but it will also help in supporting. And moving on in the news, Patriotic Front National Youth Chairman Kelvin Samba says violence, regardless of who perpetuates it, is wrong. Mr. Samba has since condemned the violence recorded in Kasama during the Lukasha parliamentary by election. He acknowledges that while PF cadres were involved in violence, even UPND cadres did the same to them, although the PF was not publicizing violence against its members. Mr. Sampa said this during a press briefing at his residence in Lusaka's Minwood area. More in this report. They say where there are two or more people, arguments are inevitable. Violence, a usual scenery during elections among his political figures. While violence can be perpetrated by anyone, it is prominent among the youths who are pursued to be used by senior political figures. Last week, videos emerged of Patriotic Front members in Kasama District recorded smashing a car branded in opposition United Party for National Development cadres, of which the perpetrators were arrested by police. While this may seem like an instigated attempt to provoke the opposition by the PF, Party National Youth Chairman Kelvin Sampa has refuted these claims, adding that political parties should come on the same platform and denounce violence of any form. I wish to condemn bluntly violence that, uh, that were exhibited, especially in my constituency, where the two political parties met and youth, our youths were engaged in physical fighting. It's very sad that actually even one of our youths was badly injured, despite that aspect has not come out. We all know that, yes, there was a vehicle for the UPND that was smashed, because that was captured by people. But nevertheless, violence is violence. We cannot compare or graduate it to anything else. We, as a political party in power and in government, on several occasions, we have condemned and also advised our young people to refrain from such type of acts. The only challenge that I must say is that there is always provocation. And these provocations are the ones that lead to such problems. And me, what I would want to encourage is all political parties, we come on the same platform and speak the same language. Because it's been so much of us as PF saying, we don't want, we condemn, but our friends, they are quiet. Now, what is that sending to our people out there? Or what is it sending to the political arena among us, all of us as political uh, uh, parties that would want to engage our people to vote for? First and foremost, 
A good example is what has transpired in Lukasha. And Mr. Sampa, who is also Kasama Central Member of Parliament, has challenged the opposition parties, especially the UPND, to champion democracy at all costs, regardless of the situation. Friends from the opposition, we want to see a day when we can say, can we go and play football together as party members from the opposition and the ruling? We see from there, whoever wins, whoever takes the day, there will not be any violence. That is what we want to see. But we know that our colleagues from the other side, we've tried so many times, they think PF will swallow them. We are just a popular party. That is unfortunate. We are a popular party with a popular president and a popular candidate for the 2021. Come 2021, we are so confident with our, our candidate because we know. But the opposition UPND has on many occasions stated that they only react if they are provoked. Clearly, there is need for a roundtable talk for this cat and mouse game to end. Sharon Kalimbula, Camnet News, Lusaka. Finance Minister Bualiang Andu is this Friday expected to present to the nation the 2021 national budget. Several stakeholders have brought forward their expectations in the budget. Some members of parliament have also hoped that the budget will address the challenges in the economy, which include the continued weakening of the kwacha, among other foreign convertibles, high debt and lack of money in the country. We have more in this report. As I support the motion, Mr. Speaker, I have a few points which I would like how Honour the President, the, the Vice President, to take note. Your Honour the Vice President, members of the public, and in particular ourselves in the opposition, are very anxious to hear what measures you as government are going to put in place to ensure that the, the spiral, downward spiral of the economy is controlled. You may be aware, Your Honor, the Vice President, that the, the Kwacha has now reached maturity and it's able to vote in the 2021 elections. Mr. Speaker, the nation is saying that the most urgent issue that needs to be resolved and addressed is the economy and not the constitution. The economy is suffering, prices are rising, the exchange rate, as we have heard, yeah. is getting out of control. We had expected that. People of Zambia, Mr. Speaker, are still with the Patriot Front government. And I don't know how much they are going to show apart from what they did in Rokasha. Question, question. What they did in Rokasha and yeah. in uh, and yeah, we have yeah, continued yeah. making inroads uh, yeah. in the other areas where uh, uh, our sure, colleagues thought they were strong. Tea. So, Mr. Speaker, tomorrow, as the Vice President indicated, the Minister will come and present a budget which, for clearance of doubt, is a culmination of all presentations that were made to his ministry by various stakeholders. Those who didn't seize that opportunity should not use this motion to try and give input to the Minister of Finance. They shouldn't. To try and do that, for lack of a better term, is mischief. This is one thing that I also want to speak about, sir. When what is on the order paper is the budget, people should not start debating the national address on principles which the President presents. We now take our last set of commercials. Do stay with us as we have more interesting stories lined up for you. The Food Reserve Agency, FRA, wishes to inform small-scale farmers countrywide that it has received funding from government and has since started buying maize, paddy rice and soya beans for national strategic food reserves. Farmers are therefore requested to deliver their crops to any nearest FRA satellite depot countrywide and note that payments are made upon delivery of their crops and processing of documentation as cash is available. FRA, securing national strategic food reserves, taking wealth to rural Zambia.
I have used Oracle Pure Glycerin for two years now. It has really worked for me. It has cleared all the black spots on my face. It has restored my skin beauty. It also smoothens the skin. Try Oracle Pure Glycerin for perfect skin. If it's not Oracle Glycerin, then it's not Pure Glycerin. Stay home, stay safe. Times have changed. With the advent of the coronavirus, Lusaka Water Supply and Sanitation Company would like to advise its esteemed customers to avoid visiting crowded places. You don't have to move to pay your water bill. You can do it in the convenience of your home. You can pay your water bills through Zanako Zapit, Stanbic Bank, Standard Chartered Bank and FNB. You can also use Airtel, MTN and Zamtel Kwacha Mobile Money Transfer Services. For any inquiries to report a fault, please contact our customer service on plus 260-211-251-571 plus 260-975-618-618 and toll-free line 59 Five seven Zamto only. You can also simply email customer service at lwsc.com. This public announcement is brought to you by the Lusaka Water Supply and Sanitation Company. Water is life, sanitation is health. Thank you so much for staying with us. We continue with the news. In international news, at least 23 people were killed after a petrol tanker overturned and caught fire on a busy road in Nigeria's central state of Koji. The tanker lost control and rammed into five cars, three tricycles and two motorcycles on the Abuja Highway on Wednesday. It reportedly fell on one of the five cars carrying a family, crashing them to death before bursting into flames, local media reported. Konji State Sector Commander of the Federal Road Safety Corp, Idris Fika Ali, confirmed that 23 people were killed in the explosion while one child survived with injuries. He went on to say that the occupants of the 10 vehicles vehicles involved had been killed. VC Kazam, a spokesman for the Federal Road Safety Corps, said nine children were involved in the accident which happened opposite a petrol station along the highway. Traffic accidents are common in Nigeria where roads are ill-maintained and safety standards poor. More in this international roundup. This is the tanker which started the fire, completely burnt, while remains of burnt vehicles, motorcycles and books also litter the scene. Nearby shops and electric poles were also not spared in the damage. Sympathizers stormed the scene as rescue operatives tried to put out the fire that's left of the explosion. Eyewitnesses say the incident occurred around 8.30 a.m. when the tanker lost control and rammed into oncoming vehicles. A trailer coming from uh, around NMPC up there, failed brick. And as uh, we had, it was trying to meander, so trying to find its way. So, and along the line, it fell down over here. And as it was trying to meander, it fell so many vehicles into the gutter, as you can see over there. And along the line, fire broke down, and the next thing, people started burning. A whole family has just perished here this morning. Yes, yes. And unfortunately, students that were happy that they returned back to school after over seven months of break, they all perished here this morning. Men of the Federal Road Safety Corps conveyed the bodies of the victims to the mortuary to the dismay of onlookers. We were on the road when this happened. And we were on the scene of the crash. Immediately, the, the incidents happened. Uh, it was only the fire that prevented uh, uh, our, um, our personnel and uh, also other sympathizers to, you know, offer uh, help to the, you know, the fire was big when, uh, when it started. So, and it was beyond uh, the control. And uh, with the absence of the fire service uh, engines, we could not do much until when the fire doused down and then we, we went into action. So far, we, we counted uh, 23 people lost their lives as far as we know there is only one child that survived the, the crash with a minor injury 
It is not the first time a tanker accident will be happening in this community, and like previous ones, residents of Felele did not see this coming. For them, this accident is one too many. In addition, the Kogi state government says it is working to clear up spaces to create mini fire stations to forestall a future occurrence. Uni Adekunle, TV 360. We now get into sports news. Zambia Super League side Forest Rangers Football Club has parted company with six players the club has confirmed. The club took to social media to announce the development. Forest Rangers has thanked the hacks for the services rendered to the Ndola-based outfit. Striker Conle Luchanga has been recalled by Lusaka Dynamos following the end of his one-year loan spell. Luchanga was hoping to resuscitate his career at Fole Malembe where he reunited with Perry Mutapa who was his trainer at Dynamos in 2015. Another under 20 AFCON championship winner and under 20 World Cup qualifier finalist is Benson Charlie has left the club after his contract came to an end. Jackson Siluimba is the third player on the list with Gift Sikaonga as the fourth. The Samfoot crew understand that Sikaonga is currently training with Zambia Air Force sponsored side Red Arrows in view of finalizing a deal at Nkoloma Stadium. Midfielder Gerald Chisha and defender, defender Henry Be have also been released by the club. That sports item brings us to the end of Camnet TV World News, but before we go, a recap of the headlines. Lusaka Kapo pleads guilty of secretly buying, burying their one-month infant. Solwezi's Kimasala area in water stress. Friday's budget presentation steers debate in parliament. And in international news, Nigeria fuel tanker crash kills 23 people. And in sports news, forest rangers part ways with Conlaid Luchanga and five others. The Kamnet World Verse of the Day is coming from the book of Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 and it reads, Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. I have been your anchor, Liseli Kanyanga. God bless.